Welcome into Outkick the Show. I am your fearless leader, Clay Travis. I hope all of you are having fantastic Tuesdays, wherever you may be across this great country or this great land. We are rolling in a fun and exciting way through and up to the return of sports in America. And you just saw bright lights potentially come on. I'm not being captured by aliens. If you are noticing that it is a different look than normal, they are now blasting my television lights in uh, the studio here, which is a good sign because they are testing our television capabilities for the return of our daily television show, Lock It In, which hopefully will be sooner rather than later. But that is why I'm almost blinded right now. I've got to reacclimate myself. We haven't had a television show since March. Uh, and they are getting prepped because... Baseball is coming back on Thursday. And so this is going to be really good as we roll forward and get ready for an actual return of sports. So right off the top, I want to reemphasize what I've been telling you for months. We are going to win. Optimist win in America. Pessimist win for short-term periods. Maybe a day maybe a week, maybe a month. But over the course of time, the story that has been the case and been the narrative arc throughout human history is optimists win and pessimists lose. And optimists are going to win again because sports, much to the chagrin of the Corona Bros, are coming roaring back everywhere in every direction simultaneously all right major league baseball is back thursday shortly thereafter the nba then the nhl and there have been major announcements made today in high school football which i'm going to get to in a minute but first the coronavirus update all right the corona bros out there are going to be upset because they root for awfulness and the truth of the matter is even as cases have skyrocketed confirmed cases in texas arizona California, and Florida, the overall death rate is not moving very much at all. Okay? Florida is a good example because they have fantastic data that they release. Around 1% of overall confirmed cases are ending in deaths. That means regardless of age, 99% of all confirmed case patients are actually doing better. All right? Than you would anticipate. And so, As you break this down, remember the CDC says only one out of every 10 people are actually caught as a part of the confirmed cases. That would mean in Florida that around 99.9% of all people that get the coronavirus are surviving. Let's say that's not true and it's actually 99.8 or 99.7%. That is still a massive absolutely massive number, okay, of survival rate. And so, this is a big deal because the worst case scenario according to the Corona Bros was, oh my God, what if we open up too soon and we have an outbreak in the country? Well, we now have had an outbreak in the country and the death rate has barely budged which, ipso facto, suggest that the easy outcome here is open up the country our hospitals can handle it if people are getting sick put everybody back to work put everybody back in schools let's get America back rolling again the worst case scenarios are not actually in the playbook anymore the Corona Bros have to acknowledge that New York and New Jersey and Connecticut and Rhode Island and uh, Massachusetts and Pennsylvania and Michigan and Illinois made disastrous decisions and followed Andrew Cuomo's lead and as long as everybody else doesn't do that the death rate is going to be a pinprick of what it was in New York. In fact, we know this because in the states of California sorry, in the states of Texas and Florida where the media loves to criticize the governors there Greg Abbott and Ron DeSantis they are actually right now approaching the same number of confirmed cases as New York and they have one-tenth of the death rate. 
if New York had had the same response of quality that Florida and Texas have had instead of 30,000 plus deaths they would have had around 3,000 deaths from the coronavirus. The story here is not Florida and Texas it's how in the world was Andrew Cuomo and everybody who followed his lead so bad in those states. That is the number one story beyond a shadow of a doubt. All right? Uh, I want to talk about high school football. High school football is a big deal because a lot of people now are focusing their fire on college football arguing that college football can't come back. Well, the NFL above college football is going to come back. And now most of the states below college football in high school it appears are going to play. Big statement made today by Texas they are going to keep 1A, 2A, 3A, and 4A schedules on tap right now with where they are and they're going to move 5 and 6A but the vast majority of Texas high school football is going to be back up and running with games by August the 27th practice starts back up soon. The states of Georgia and Florida have both decided that practice will start back up on Monday. The state of Georgia is going to play a full season starting the first week in September. All of these big states Georgia, Florida, and Texas are going to be followed by all the other southern states. This is a big deal not just because it's important for these kids to be able to play high school football and all other fall sports But I think it is also hugely important because this is just further confirmation that college football is going to play. All of the states in the Big 12 and all of the states in the SEC are going to play high school football. Well, if your argument is you can't allow amateurs to play college football how in the world can you make that argument when all of these high schools are playing as well? So what you've got now is high-end pro athletes in the NFL are playing lower end high school football players are playing that means easily we're going to have college football in the SEC and in the Big 12 at minimum. I hope the ACC stays strong with the SEC and the Big 12 and I hope the Pac-12 and the Big 10 come to their senses and realize they overreacted when they canceled all of the out of conference games because it doesn't really make sense to cancel the out of conference games. Either you can play or you can't If someone can explain to me why non-conference football stops the spread of the coronavirus we all ought to be canceling games against non-conference football. Okay? So this is not a difficult decision to make. College football is going to play I believe much to the consternation of the Corona Bros out there. All right. Uh, Let's get into uh, what's going on with the NFL. The NFL has now decided that they are going to have helmet decals on their helmets that are featuring the initials or names of people who are victims of police malfeasance. All right, here is the the issue that I have with this. If you are going to allow helmet decals you have to go back and apologize to Jason Witten because you wouldn't allow him to wear a helmet decal with the Dallas Cowboys in honor of all of the police officers who were assassinated by a member of Black Lives Matter a few years ago. The story then was the NFL said we don't allow political statements to be made via helmet decals. So how in the world is the NFL going to allow a small number of helmet decals for people who are victims of police violence but they're not going to allow helmet decals to allow police officers who have lost their lives trying to protect all of us to be on helmets as well. All right? The NFL needs to be very careful here. They better not discriminate on content like the NBA is doing. If you're going to allow statements to be made about politics on the helmets then you need players and teams to be able to make a variety of different statements. Okay? That needs to be consistent. If you're going to allow Black Lives Matter to put on people like Michael Brown when we know hands up don't shoot was a lie right? The entire hands up don't shoot movement was a lie. Michael Brown was not killed uh, unjustly by a police officer. Okay? And so if you actually allow that 
then you better allow players who want to honor law enforcement to do it as well. I'll also point this out. The NFL would not allow Tim Tebow to put Bible verses in his eye black. Do you remember that becoming a story? The NFL wouldn't allow Tim Tebow to write a Bible verse in his eye black and actually play in the NFL. If you won't allow a player to write a Bible verse in his eye black how in the world are you going to allow a player to make a statement politically on his helmet? The NFL better allow players who want to put Bible verses on their helmets to do so as well. You can't set in place a policy that doesn't allow Bible verses or the endorsement of police officers for all that they do for us across the country and simultaneously allow an endorsement of Black Lives Matter political sloganeering. Okay? So, I think that if you are going to allow this you need to open it up to a variety of different perspectives. Okay? People should be able to honor whatever they would like to honor if you are going to allow helmet stickers. That is my position. It needs to be consistent and it needs to not be content discriminatory. Everybody needs to be considered equal. And by the way, if you're going to allow BLM stickers, what about if somebody is pro-choice? What about if somebody is pro-life? What about if somebody is anti the death penalty? What about if somebody is pro-Trump or pro-Biden? Where do you draw the line on which political statements are permitted to be made on uniforms during NFL games? If you are going to allow them, don't lead me down the path that the that the NBA has adopted where they give you propaganda and require you to only have political opinions that they approve. The NFL needs to be fair and even-handed. Somebody wants a Bible verse, they can get it. If somebody wants to analyze uh, or advocate for BLM, they can do it. If somebody wants to advocate for abortion, pro or con, they should be able to advocate for that too. I think this is a bad move by the NFL, but I want it to be applied consistently And in particular, the NFL is breaking precedent here because they wouldn't allow Jason Witten and the Dallas Cowboys to advocate for officers who were shot while doing their job executed by a member of Black Lives Matter in Dallas. But they will allow Black Lives Matter to put names of individuals on the back of their helmets. They wouldn't allow Tim Tebow to put a Bible verse in his eye black but they will allow someone to advocate for political causes on their helmets. This is the NFL breaking precedent. They need to be actually honest and be 100% consistent not content discriminate not content discriminate based on political opinions. Maybe they even need to allow an outkick decal. We might have some guys out there who want to rock an outkick decal or a debat decal on their helmets. Just think about it. Uh, A couple of other things. Uh, This is a positive. It's going to drive the Corona Bros crazy. We had yesterday 4,170 tests in the MLS, the NHL, and the NBA. Two of them were positive, both in the NHL. Let me repeat that. Yesterday, they had 4,170 tests in the MLS, NHL, and NBA, players and staff, Two positive tests out of those 4,170. Sports are coming roaring back. The number of positive tests that are being uh, found are minimal. And facts matter here. We are going to be able to actually play all of these sports. I got my list here just to drive the Corona Bros crazy. By August and September, get ready boys and girls, MLB, NFL, NHL, NBA, MLS, PGA, WNBA, UFC, LPGA, NWSL, PBA, Boxing, NASCAR, Kentucky Derby, Indy 500, and Lacrosse are all going to be happening as well as the uh, as well as college football. I say three things matter. I just happen to glance over and see somebody in the comments. Three things matter on my show: the facts, the facts, the facts. There's a reason why OutKick is growing. Get ready, Corona Bros. On an exponential basis, unlike anything else, OutKick is taking off. We are growing. It's an unbelievable rate 
of growth, the likes of which I've never seen in anything that I've ever done before. By the way, somebody said great article by Whitlock's, one of his best. One of Whitlock's best right now. Go read it at outkick.com. It is an incredible piece. Absolutely incredible piece that I would encourage all of you to go read. I'd encourage all of you to go sign up for Outkick VIP. This is probably going to be the last week you can get a copy of my book because we have had thousands of you sign up for Outkick VIP. It's $99 for the year and frankly, I don't have enough books anymore. I called the publisher the other day. They said they have no books and so it's going to take a long time for me to get new copies of my book because you guys have bought out everything that was in stock uh, as a part of joining up for the Outkick VIP. Uh, More positive news. The University of Texas sent out an email saying not only that they are intending to play a 12-game schedule but that they expect to have up to 50% capacity for college football games. It slipped under the radar a little bit but NASCAR in Bristol and also in uh, Texas had fans present. The Indy 500 says they are going to have around 25% capacity up to 100,000 people potentially present at the Indy 500. There are a lot of different sports that are going to have big crowds present. I'm not a guy who's been concerned about how many people watch the games. I just want the games to happen. If I can sit on my couch and put it on television I think it's a good sign but props to the University of Texas and the state of Texas in general and their governor uh, Abbott who has done an incredible job getting uh, things back up and running better than almost anyone with the lowest major state death rate in the entire country. Everybody wants to praise Germany. Texas has almost the same per million resident death rate right now as Germany and Germany did the best job of any democracy in the entire world Western democracy anyway at responding to the coronavirus. Texas's death rate somebody just said it is half of what the death rate is in Canada and everybody's been bragging about how good of a job Canada has done actually look at the numbers don't run around and be a corona bro celebrating bad things especially when there aren't even that many bad things that are going on. Uh, All right, Trevor Lawrence. This is pretty funny. Trevor Lawrence, did you guys see this? He got into a Twitter war of words when a local Louisiana uh, news guy congratulated him on getting engaged and said he felt very, very good about this engagement and he was sure that Trevor Lawrence's dad, Joe Burrow, did as well. Trevor Lawrence was not happy that Joe Burrow was called his daddy and he fired back at the local news anchor. This is why college football is great because you have feuds between local news guys in Louisiana saying that Trevor Lawrence's dad is Joe Burrow. All we need now is for Joe Burrow to get involved in the mix. Trevor Lawrence is headed towards being the number one overall draft pick. I always think it's funny when people really get concerned about what's being said about them especially and I understand Trevor Lawrence a young guy but especially when it's somebody who is a scintilla as famous as you are Trevor Lawrence. One of the lessons you have to learn and certainly I've had to learn it and I'm 41 years old now is I pretty much only feud with people who are as famous or more famous than me. There's no benefit in me going around very often and slapping around some of those little blue check marks with no followers. All I do is give them attention which is like when you're the older brother and your little brother is like grabbing you by the ankle you just kind of kick him away you don't need to uh, totally destroy him. Now every now and then every now and then just to send a message because it's like being in prison Twitter is like prison every now and then you got to shiv somebody in line for cornbread in the prison. Right? Every now and then somebody steps to you at the wrong time the wrong day, the wrong moment and you got to pull out your shiv and just get a dude because you're already in jail for life. What more do you have to lose? You've got to protect your street rep. And so I got to protect my Twitter street rep every now and then and I will every now and then just shiv a dude but most of the time I don't spend very much time unless you are at least as famous as me. There's absolutely nothing to gain. But I did think this Trevor Lawrence story was pretty funny and was why uh, college football one of many reasons is so great. Finally, did you see the controversy out of the White House press corps? This was pretty funny. 
uh, Kaylee McGinney, McGinney, uh, the White House press secretary, was talking, and she's really pretty good at it, right? I mean, this is where you see there's a pretty substantial intellectual gap between the average graduate of Harvard Law, like Ben Shapiro, by the way, who I had on my podcast yesterday, and I would encourage you to go watch. The press secretary is a graduate of Harvard Law School. She is incredibly well prepared for what is, on average, a press corps that is not smart enough, anywhere near smart enough, to get into Harvard Law School, or, Law School, or for that matter, to get into Vanderbilt Law School. Okay, so if you get into a top law school, you are on average intellectually able to dunk on the average member of the media. That's not hyperbole. That's not exaggeration. That is just intellectual truth. Okay, and pretty regularly, she is destroying the members of the media. And now there was a controversy. You can go watch the tape to see whether or not the member of the White House press corps, when she got cut off, called the press secretary a lying bitch. And so this in and of itself was pretty funny and pretty entertaining. And the reason why I liked it was it was like the Lonnie, what was the other thing, the Lonnie? Remember the, 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 the gold dress or the, uh, or the purple dress or yellow dress or whatever it was and then the Yanni, the two different names. It depended on what you actually thought the audio told you. I thought it sounded like she said, lying bitch. I listened to it like 20 times every single time. I don't know either of these women. Never met them. Every single time I heard it, I heard lying bitch. And it was Laura and Yanni. Okay, so in and of itself, that was interesting. I think if I had to vote, right, if I had to vote and I was on a jury and you said which was said here, I would say she said uh, lying bitch. And so we will see what exactly goes on, what the fallout is of this. She says she was not saying that, something about you choose not to engage. And so this is just more shenanigans from the press corps going up against the Trump White House. Rinse, repeat, every day, going on and on. By the way, tomorrow we have a loaded program on the radio show. Uh, We have got uh, the senator from Pennsylvania, Toomey, who is on, he did a roundtable discussion today about Major League Baseball, Little League Baseball, the return of baseball in general. He's been on the show once before. I think he's going to be fantastic tomorrow talking about the return of baseball. And we're also going to have Missouri Senator Josh Hawley on as well. Both of them on live. Both of them will be great. One at 720, that's Senator Josh Hawley from Missouri. The next at 820, that is Senator uh, Toomey from Pennsylvania. And both of them are going to be on the radio program tomorrow morning talking about sports early in the morning with you and me and our entire audience. So I appreciate all of you for coming and hanging out with me. We have been having an incredible time. The growth rate of OutKick is absolutely exponential. You want to talk about exponential growth, uh, Corona Bros, we are going to hit a potential all-time high, the likes of which very few sports talk radio shows have ever hit for our podcast downloads in July. And I appreciate all of you. We are skyrocketing in growth. That goes for this show as well, which is also up as an audio podcast. Also for our OutKick VIPs, I encourage all of you to go and hang out and read and be sure that you're not missing anything at all. I had to kill a few men with the Clay Travis, Clay Kyle sniper, and I appreciate all of you for continuing to hang out. If you enjoy this show, share it with your friends. You can also go check out any clips you love at YouTube. DBAP. Unless you need to SBAP, I am Clay Travis. Kisses. I'll see all you guys tomorrow. See y'all. Bye. Love you. Thank you, Facebook. See ya.